I've added subtitles to all of my videos, so if you have a hard time understanding my weird free Korean accent, feel free to turn it on. 기름. It's the year 2021, the start of a new year, but some things never change. The sun rises up in the sky every day, a well-known YouTuber turns out to be another pedophile, coronavirus wrecks havoc across the world, and the Pokemon company likes money, so there'll be another Pokemon game this holiday. Last year, Game Freak put out a DLC, not a new game. Do you realize the last year we had no Pokemon game was back in 2015? 2015 was so long ago! Back in 2015, Star Wars movie was just about to come out, Nintendo was still making Wii U games, Kevin Spacey was still in movies, and Pyro Cynical was making... Uh, I don't even know what to call this genre of videos. Anyways, the point is, Game Freak has been pumping out games every year for a very long time. And the quality of the game kept nosediving and Sword and Shield ended up being very mediocre. Well, since they skipped the year, got the unpaid interns to make the DLC of Sword and Shield for 2020, and got a new office so they can have more time to screw around, and more space to cook curry, I'm 99% sure we will see Diamond and Pearl remakes coming this holiday. Yeah, I know they can make a new region or something, but they know gamers are willing to open their wallets for Sinnoh, so it is inevitable the next game will be a Diamond and Pearl remake. So, to celebrate 2021, and since I have made a few videos that require a lot of research and time and effort in a row recently, how about today, let's just relax and dream for a bit. This time, I'll show you my delusions of grandeur, a fantasy future where calling the Diamond and Pro remakes good on the internet wouldn't be a hot take. This is what needs to be done to achieve this fantasy. The graphics. I'll get this straight out of the way. I didn't mind the graphics of Sword and Shield. Uh, mostly didn't mind. This might be another hot take, but I think the art style of Sword and Shield is completely fine. The Pokemon models all look fine, and while I admit the idle animations of the Pokemon can be better, the world is colorful enough. The problem with the graphics of Sword and Shield were the often quote-unquote hiccups that happened which broke immersion, because either Game Freak didn't have time and rushed development, or they were lazy. Wow, I feel like a broken alarm clock that repeats the same word, time, rushed, and lazy, at this point. Of course, in a perfect world, the next Pokemon games will be developed with a completely new game engine that is more optimized and realistic. But I'll bet on my p that the Sinnoh Remix will be running on the same engine as Sword and Shield. Here are some of the hiccups in Sword and Shield that I want to see get ironed out in the Gen 4 Remix. First, the poor draw distance for example. Jesus, Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64 had better draw distance. I don't remember the 3DS games having this issue, so what the hell happened? Second, there are some cool battle animations in Sword and Shield. Usually the Dynamax or whatever moves are fine. However, there are some distractingly bad animated moves like Double Hit, which is almost a meme now. And boy, if you don't like that move, you better not catch Buiza or Apom in the beginning of the game. Third, can we just make some of the character animations better? I said multiple times, but every time a character turns around like they're stuck in 2D in a full HD environment, it's super distracting and breaks immersion. I do not want to see my boy Barry and my gal Dom move around like the T-800 in the first Terminator movie. Fuck you, asshole. The map. I think Sinnoh has the best map design of all Pokemon games, and it's a fact. And that's why so many people love Sinnoh so much. After playing the lazy map design of Sword and Shield, and turning on my old Pokemon Platinum save, I was blown away by how well designed this game's map design is. Like, have you noticed how mountainous Sinnoh is? There are so many areas with cliffs, rivers, and small lakes. Many routes are designed so that they don't feel like a straight line from beginning to end. There are so many great dungeons like Eterna Forest, Iron Island, and of course, my favorite cave in the entire series, Mount Coronet. Such a foreboding and huge cave system, it was easy to get lost and made us want to buy Prima guidebooks, and created the careers of many Bulbapedia writers. I also love Route 216 and 217, because this place really made me feel like I was Jack Torrance in The Shining. I don't think any other video game snow level has ever captured the foreboding atmosphere of a cold blizzard, except maybe Surface 2 on GoldenEye 007. So my wishes are, I just want to see all these places realized in full HD, without any cutting corners. No watering down the roots so that it can be more linear so that babies will have more fun playing it. 
I hope Masuda realizes that I played these games as a baby and had fun. Why would it modern kids also be? I was sorely disappointed when they watered down Sky Pillar and Granite Cave in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but thank god they didn't water down any dungeons in Let's Go except for Cerulean Cave, so hopefully Game Freak doesn't make Mount Coronet a boar fest or too easy. The Story Look, I know the plot of Pokemon games aren't terribly complicated and cliche as hell. Get Pokedex, fight gyms, fight sociopathic egocistical maniacs, catch the Furby drawn on the cover, beat champion, done. One of the positives of Oras was the more in-depth lore they added to the original Ruby and Sapphire, like how they tied Deoxys, who was an event-only Pokemon in the OG games, with Rayquaza in the Delta episode. I think the Deoxys equivalent Pokemon in the Sinnoh games is Arceus, so I really want to have a story moment where we face off Arceus in the game. Maybe we'll see Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina fuse with Arceus like Kyurem in Gen 5, or Necrozma in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and I think that will be pretty awesome. Like I've said, I don't expect too much story from a goddamn Pokemon game. Expecting a good story in a Pokemon game is like expecting a good superhero movie directed by Zack Snyder. I just want to see awesome moments so fanboys like me will cream their pants, like when Rayquaza destroyed the fucking meteor in space. Let's have Dialga use the War of Time to make players actually go back in time to the Stone Age, or Palkia use Special Ren to break the laws of physics. The ideas are endless. World of pure imagination. The Contest I have actually never liked the contest mode on Diamond and Pearl, and still have no interest today. I've also never seen anyone talk about how they missed this part of the game, so... I honestly don't even care if this mode is completely gone in the remake. I guess it could be done well, but it'll likely be pretty bland and boring. Search your feelings, Pokemon fans. You know it to be true. Pokeball Seals No, not that seal. All the past entries since X and Y, except Oras, have added the feature of character customization in the game. I do wish changing clothes does come back in this game, especially being able to change into gym leader clothes from Sword and Shield. However, there was one feature that was only in the Sinnoh games, and that was Pokeball Seals. Basically, you can decorate the effect of the Pokeball when the Pokemon comes out of the ball. Even some of the NPCs use them, which makes them more special. I just want to see this feature return, but in full 3D. After seeing games like Mario Maker on the Switch, I think there'll be more potential for more creative aesthetics in a 3D battle environment for crazies to tinker around with. The Underground There was a weird feature that was introduced in this game that was forgotten in the next games, similar to Pokewood Studios, the Pokenav, Mega Evolution, Z Moves, and soon Dynamax in Gen 9. That feature was the Sinnoh Underground, a feature that used the communication feature of the Nintendo DS. Players can explore a giant labyrinth, build secret bases like the previous gen games, mine for diamonds, I mean plates and fossils, and get items from vendors while at the same time communicating with other players through multiplayer features. It was a nice feature to the game, but I honestly didn't use it much as a kid, probably because I had no friends when growing up. But I think there's a lot of potential to the idea, since there's an internet now. I think we can have a giant map with hundreds of people linked to the same server. Everyone can build bases, interact by battling and trading. It will be like a Pokemon mini MMORPG. How fun would that be? Game Freak will be able to hold events underground, sort of like the max raid battles in Sword and Shield, but less stupid. Imagine if streamers can create their own Sinnoh underground servers and hold massive PvP events online. I've never liked the online features of recent Pokemon games, but I think the Sinnoh underground has a lot of potential. To summarize, I hope for MMORPG Pokemon Minecraft in the remakes. Stuff from the Muir games even though I think the map design of Sinnoh is almost near damn perfect, I think there can be some modern changes that should be brought over from the Muir Pokemon games. Quality of life changes like less HM moves and improved battle screens is a basic feature that should be added in, and will be probably done. However, I solely hope for the roaming Pokemon in the overall from the Let's Go games and Sword and Shield. It will be distracting playing a full HD game where random encounters happen in empty spaces. Second, I think the concept of a wild area was not bad. I've seen some fan art maps of Sinnoh with wild areas added into the game, like Sword and Shield, and I believe this could be a neat idea. The point is, let's take the good things of the modern games and put it in the remakes, please. Minor things? The battle screen. I just love the fast transition animation whenever a battle starts. 
like there's this unique animation where the camera zooms and then the trainer slides in. It's hard to explain, but it's catchy as hell and just screams Gen 4. I wish to see this effect recreated in 3D, like how they recreated Gen 1 to 3 battles openings in Let's Go, the Amity Square north of Hearthstone City. I would like to see this idea expanded into full 3D HD. Maybe they'll recycle the camping mechanics of Sword and Shield. <laughs> <laughs> also, do you know the Dialga slash Palkia statue at Eternal City? This sprite was so ingenious because it can be viewed as both Dialga and Palkia, sort of like an optical illusion. I hope they recreate this in full 3D. The music. Diamond and Pearl had one of the most memorable music of the entire series. I wish that we got a full orchestrated music of the same soundtrack. And considering Pokemon music has always been flawless even in the mirror games, I don't worry a lot here. Masuda and his team are still damn good composers. Platinum Editions I have saved my biggest hopes for last. The biggest gripe I had with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire was the exclusion of Pokemon Emerald content, like the exclusion of the Battle Frontier, Where the hell is it? exclusion of Team Magma hideout under Mount Chimney, exclusion of seeing Groudon and Kyogre duking it out, Fossil Tower, and the list goes on. I guess you could call it another case of Game Freak cutting corners, since they didn't have to put in the effort, work, and time into creating extra Emerald content. And if you say, oh, it's a remake of Ruby and Sapphire, they didn't have to put in the Emerald content technically, please leave. Heart Gold and Soul Silver had crystal content like the Suicune storyline, which made the game overall better. So my point is, I want platinum content in the remakes. I want the Distortion World, the Gen 4 Battle Frontier, Karen of Team Galactic, bigger Pokedex, improved story moments, Looker, and the list goes on. Why am I so fixated on platinum content? Well, here's the secret, kids. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl are actually really shitty games. What? 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 Bland content, broken slow ass battle engine, it was Pokemon Platinum that made the Sinnoh region so lovable and memorable. You might have realized I've been using more Platinum clips than Diamond and Pearl footage, and that is the precise reason. Hopefully Game Freak realizes this, because unlike Ruby and Sapphire, Diamond and Pearl felt like incomplete games and recreating only those games while excluding platinum content will be disappointing. Conclusion So, to summarize my entire video, I'll do it in one sentence. Game Freak, please don't cut corners in the Diamond and Pearl remake, and make sure to include platinum content. Hopefully this video was a nostalgia trip to old players like me, who grew up playing Pokemon on our DS lights in our bed, when our parents were sleeping. For younger or newer Pokemon fans, I hope the Diamond and Pearl remakes capture the feel of Sinnoh, so that all of you can breathe in the magic of Sinnoh as well, like us. And that's it folks. Next video will not be about Pokemon, but the next Pokemon video probably will be based on Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon, because talking about Platinum made me remember how much I despise these games. However, I need to replay it though to jog my memory, and if you guys are interested, I might stream the experience live. So follow me on Twitter if you want to hear my plans about that. I haven't decided whether to use YouTube or Twitch, and I have never streamed before so it might go very poorly. Also, because many people kept asking, my outro music is the Pokemon League music from Diamond and Pearl.